Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor and today we are painting Simple Portrait. <laughs> okay, we got Keenan here working the cameras. Hello, thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. And we will be doing this project in five steps. You see how I just went straight through that little fumble? Smooth. Smooth. <laughs> Okay, so our very first step is we are going to be doing the outline and then using our masking fluid pen to kind of mark off the areas that we want to keep white. Our second step is we will be doing starting with the hair wash, which is like all around here. Our f third, <laughs> third step is doing the face, painting the face in. Our fourth step is rubbing off the masking fluid. That is a whole step. It takes a long time. Oh. Our fifth step is just kind of doing our splatters and then if we need to like sharpen up any areas or clean anything off. That's our last step. Can I say the sixth step you wrote down? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's because there's nothing written by it. I was like going to do a sixth step and then decided against it so it says six and then nothing <laughs> on the whiteboard back here. That was just a, that was a play on words. <laughs> okay, so. We are using three colors for this project. We are using black. Mm. We are using Tahoe blue. Ooh. And we are using violet. Now this is our in-house paint. It's called Dandelion Paint Co. Three colors. So good. So beautiful. I'm using a round six and a round two. If you have a larger round brush or like even a wash brush, I suggest using it, but I'll, I'm just gonna be using my six. I'm also gonna be using this um, Pabio drawing gum. Um, it's a masking fluid pen, basically. That's how we're gonna mask off the areas that we wanna keep white. Um, I'm also gonna be using this eraser. It's specifically made for rubbing off masking fluid. But you can always use your fingers if you don't have that. And um, we are using LMA branded watercolor paper, which is still kind of a new item. That's exciting. So it's just like exciting, but okay. So let's start with our outline, then we'll do our oath, and then we'll get into painting. So you can find the outline on our website. I taped it to my watercolor paper. And you wanna make sure that you're using the rougher or more textured side on your watercolor paper. That's the side you want to paint on. And do you know what, actually, I'll wait, I'll wait. Um, I'm also gonna tape my paper down after I do that outline, because it's just like easier to paint on tape down paper. Hmm. So. I'm gonna put my graphite paper dark shiny side down and whatever line I make, it's gonna transfer onto the paper. Now you can see that that was a pretty dark line. So you can adjust the lightness and darkness of your outline depending on the pressure of your pencil. Also, there are many ways that you can transfer images onto your watercolor paper. Graphite paper for me is the easiest way honestly prefer that method, but I also know it's not a popular method by how many comments I see of people hating graphite paper. <laughs> um, and that's just because it's kind of a, it takes a little bit of a, you gotta finesse it a little bit. Mm. And so like, I'm kind of used to how uh, difficult it can be so it doesn't bother me. But if you are feeling really frustrated by your graphite paper, I understand, I don't blame you. You can use a light box to trace, you can use a window, you can even use a computer screen, um, any of those things. There's many different ways. And then a, just a friendly reminder that like, be aware of what it is that you're tracing. Um, any photograph that you find online is not free to use. Does that make sense? I think so. Because photographs are artworks itself and so like a lot of my reference photos I get from commercial free websites. Um, so then I know that I'm allowed to use them and I'm not infringing on anybody's rights. Um, so I just want to say that like, that's something I try to be mindful of, to be respectful of artwork and photo photography. So just putting that out there for you.
And also like this project is a little bit confusing because you're going to want to color in the areas that you actually want to keep white. It makes it, uh, you know, a little confusing, but it's okay. Just stick with me. It's like reverse painting. Yes. Okay. That's it. Got my outline. Oh, I missed an area. And if that happens, you can just like draw it in. Remember, outlines are just guides for you. They're not, it's not like the end of the world if your outline is different. <laughs> Don't think of it. It's not a coloring book page. I want you to color outside the lines. Within reason? What do you mean? Outside the lines with no, like willy nilly, <laughs> or a little bit of control. I want people to feel like they can do whatever they want. So even if you trace this outline perfectly and then you decide, I'm not gonna follow this outline, I'm gonna do whatever I want. More power to you, you're amazing, you're brave, like do it. An outline was just a way that I can show you guys that painting's really fun <laughs> and like drawing is really hard. And I think it's a valuable skill to learn, but I don't want that lack of skill to stop you guys from enjoying the joys of painting. So I'll help you with that part. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I taped my outline with my favorite tape ever, Holbein soft tape. It's so good. Okay. So we are still on step one. So now I'm gonna take my masking fluid pen and this is where having the reference sheet will be super handy to look at because that's how you'll know what you need to mask off. So whatever you see white within this, that's what you're gonna use your masking fluid on, okay? So if it's your first time using the marker, you're gonna have to like press it down a couple of times to get it to come out. This marker is magical. Isn't it so fun? It's so cool. I don't fully understand what masking fluid is, but I know what its job is, and it's incredible. What do you, like, you don't know the chemical makeup of it, or you don't know how, like, how would you describe yeah. it? So, because, like, you put it on as though it's a liquid, mm -hmm. and a few seconds after it dries, it's tangible and gummy. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Yeah. It's like glue. Yeah. Uh. Did you ever do that thing where you would get like El Elmer's glue and just like cover your hand in a thin layer of glue and then let it dry and then you like peel it off? No. It's fine. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I never did that either. Oh. <laughs> Definitely sounded like you did. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Okay. Now this is where it gets tricky because like some of these sections are sections and then some of them are just lines. So like this line right here, this is just a line. I'm not actually like coloring in this section. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, now another thing that you can do to kind of like save your masking fluid is like, this is a huge area that we're keeping white. So like you can take your marker across the whole thing, which if you have the step-by-step, -step, that is what I did. But like that uses a lot of masking fluid. So if you don't want to do that, you can just only like do like a half inch radius around all the things that you want to keep white and just be like careful. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, like creating a border. Yeah, but whatever you guys feel comfortable doing. And remember with the pencil marks, you're like, wait, are they going to like be seen, the pencil marks, because I'm masking over them? And actually when you take off the masking fluid, it takes off the pencil marks. And also just how like this project is, is we're basically using hard edges the whole time. So you wouldn't really see the lines anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And another hint, like when you're using this masking fluid, it only has the thickness of a marker of a tip, which means that if you are filling like the whole thing, it's possible that you'll get like some sections that aren't filled. Do you see that? Yep. So like, just be aware of that. 
that's how if you look at this reference photo you see how i have some a little bit of purple in there mm. that's because i had a little thin but i actually think that that adds to our eyebrow shape so i was like oh that's kind of cool i totally agree with that she has she, great brows she does so i was just like all right as they would say i believe in the years uh 2018 ish on fleek <laughs> yeah i think that's the correct terminology yeah Oh, there's a. Not telling you. <gasps> what is his name? Can't tell you. I mean, you gotta. You have to remember it. What an Oscar. Is, yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, Oscar, what? I'm really sorry. I'm so sorry, Oscar. We didn't mean it. Oscar, I didn't mean it. Please be nice to me. Please continue to work. Oscar is our AC unit. Mm-hmm. A compressor compressor so um he pops in every now and then to say hello make sure we don't forget about him he's doing a lot of really interesting work actually yeah yeah keenan used to be a hvac technician in a previous life that's true so he knows a thing or two about compressors but not not more than two <laughs> <laughs> Are you like, are we still masking? Yes. This takes so long. Sorry. I, I wasn't thinking that. Okay. I'm thinking that. I'm like, when can I p go get to painting? Because like, hello. I'll tell you what I was thinking. What were you thinking? I was thinking that the word face is very funny to me. <laughs> the word face? Just the word face. Why? I don't know. <laughs> I've been trying not to giggle for several <laughs> minutes. I just realized something, and I'm so sorry about it. On the outline, it's missing the top hairline. Draw it in. Oh. I just looked at it, because I'm like, oh, did I forget to trace that, or did I like forget to draw it? You see where it's missing right there? Yeah. Um, I'm so sorry for leading you guys astray. Just go ahead and draw a line across. Got it. Ooh, you could even potentially give her a widow's peak if you want. Ooh, yeah. That's why I left it off. Yeah, we wanted to create Add some personality to that hairline. <laughs> <laughs> this was, is your painting. That was no mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a professional. I'm just going all in on this forehead. All right, I'm going to move down here. Now, two things about this. So the neck, I masked off completely. The shoulders here, I kind of just did a line. But if you guys want to mask off this whole area and have her kind of like chest and shoulders be kept white, you can do that too. It's completely up to you. I'm sorry, you guys. I am, I'm dying here. I just want to paint. <laughs> Are you going to mask the rest of her face? No. You yeah. Really. I probably will. I want to show you guys the right way. But I just like. I just, I wasn't sure if it was just your method of, like, I was like, oh, she just wants to finish that small section down there, then go back to finishing the face. I'll go back. I didn't know. I feel like a lot of my. Uh, techniques and like why I even love watercolor is like it, it I, I get to painting faster because like right now this isn't fun for me <laughs> I want some paint and a paintbrush you could give her freckles <gasps> by not masking specific spots oh my gosh that's a great idea I'm not gonna do it what? but somebody <laughs> else can do it <laughs> <laughs> the reason why I'm not going to do it is because like trying to actually draw around very tiny circles a lot of them takes time and like I said I want to get to painting mm -hmm. and also it's kind of like tricky to um, like have those freckles look like freckles mm. in this painting so I'm not doing that 
Sorry. Sorry, Keenan, but no. it was a great idea. No, thank you. Somebody else can try it. So, like, at this p spot, you really don't have to fill all this in as long as you don't take a paintbrush across this entire thing and just keep this white. You're good. You know what I mean? Yes. Because you got that border. Because we have, like, a super thick border. Mm -hmm. You should know where not to paint. Yeah. But sometimes it's also really fun to just take your paintbrush across the whole thing and know that, like, it's going to be okay. Just, it's kind of scary, though. That's really... What's the phrase? Living on the edge? Mm-hmm. That really is living on the edge. I'm trying to think if there's... Anything else that I am missing? I don't think so. Okay. We did it. We survived step one. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Okay. Now we are going to let this dry because if you take your paintbrush across wet masking fluid, that masking fluid is actually gonna get into your bristles and ruin them. So you wanna make sure that this is nice and dry before you use your paintbrush on top of this painting, okay? And to make sure it's dry, I kinda just like touch. If it's still sticky, like right here where I was just going, it's still tacky. My finger is sticking to it, not dry yet. Like down here, that feels good. That feels dry. So it's just like, if your finger is sticking to it, don't paint it yet. Have I also been impatient and ruined quite a few paintbrushes? I have. I'm trying to save you from that. But sometimes you just want to paint. You're just ready. It's clear that you just want to paint. Okay. So I'm going to, and I want you to notice this, is I start with like the darkest values closest to around the face. And then as I move the wash out past it, I add water to lighten it. Mm. Okay. You don't have to do that. You guys can do an even wash or you can do lighter to darker, whatever you want, but I'm just showing you how I approach this. So I'm going to take some violet and some Tahoe, some blue and a tiny bit of black but like not too much black because I don't want it to be gray. I just want like a nice blue purple color. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. Okay. And I got some water on there. So we'll spread nice. And I'm just going to start painting. I'm still not used to the masking glue pen stuff. Mm -hmm. So when you went right over that line, my heart skipped a beat. You want to go right over, especially in the hair, the hair waves. You want to go right over that line. Look at that pretty blue. Ooh, yeah, isn't that good? Oh, goodness. And then at this point, I'm just going to kind of just be grabbing water and pulling color from what I already laid down to lighten it. This is incredible. Oh, I got a splatter there, but that's okay because we're gonna add splatters later on anyway, you know? And you wanna work fairly quickly because as you let the paint dry, it's harder to like blend it out into something else. So to avoid like hard edges, I just want you guys to like go. And this is one of those paintings that like your wash does not have to be perfect or smooth. It doesn't have to be like anything. You know what I mean? Like. We did the hard work already with our masking fluid pen. So now we kind of just get to like have fun. You can even do like water drops if you want some like different textures in there. If you want strong color, you can do drops of color. Like play with it. I have so many ideas. You can do so much with this masking fluid technique. She kind of looks like she's just getting a mask done. You know, she went to the spa. She's getting mad. Yes. You know. Oh, also, she's, she's gonna done. she's gonna look like super weird until we do her eyes and then rub everything off. Just so you know, because right now you're like, I don't. Is that a person? You know what I mean? Like, it just looks kind of weird. And I also went with an unfinished edge around here. That means I didn't go all the way out to my paper 
But um, if you want to, you can. I mean, I taped it off. So if, if you taped yours off too, you can have like this really gorgeous clean edge. That would be. She kind of looks like an ice character. Yes. I can see that. Like an X-Men character or something. Yes. I don't know which one. I don't know if there even is one. Well, there's like Iceman, but he's a man. Okay. So she's Ice Woman. She's Ice Woman. There's got to be one. Yeah, her eyebrows are excellent. Okay. I'm going back to the ear. That stuff just pushes the paint right off. Yeah, it resists it. That's incredible. It's resistant. <laughs> it's resisting. Resistance it is, is not futile. Yes. That's a Star Trek quote, but backwards. <laughs> the Keenan <Kenan> quote. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And you can see at this point, I'm not picking up any paint. I'm just using water. I'm spreading the color that I already laid down out. And I'm working quickly. I am not concerning myself with the texture of the wash. Like allow yourself the freedom to like just put the paint down on the paper and let it be. Let it be. I just did the same thing in my head though. Oh really? Yeah. That blue yeah. looks so bright and happy. My, um, I actually thought about my husband, Michael, when I was painting this and creating this project because like he loves like a good purple blue. Like mm -hmm. it's like his favorite color. And so the whole time I was just like, oh my, I'm like Michael is going to love this painting. <laughs> <laughs> it's such good colors. And look, what I love about this purple is that, like, as it dries, you get hints of, like, do you see that pink in there? Oh, yes. Isn't that beautiful? Yes, it is. Oh, and look at this bloom I'm getting right here. Okay. Yes. Okay. And this one here, mm. where I put, like, that water drop. Mm-hmm. By that ear. Yeah. Yes. So I... For me, I really love it actually when I put a color down and then that color actually like kind of separates a little bit and you get hints of the colors used to mix that color. Mm. I personally just love it because then it's just like, oh, I get pink in this painting. I didn't even put pink in there. Like <laughs> it did the work for me. Thank you colors. Thank you colors for making my job so easy. And also, like, you guys can use whatever colors that you see fit. Do you know what would be really fun is if you did, like, a family portrait. Yeah. And you did, like, let's say you have four people in your family, and then you change the colors depending on, like, the person's favorite color, and then you can put that in your house. That's an excellent idea. Wouldn't that be fun? Yes. Do you know what my idea was? What? Much less kind. What? <laughs> I just want to find someone with a, a nice mullet. Yes. And do the same thing for them. Perfect. Not, I, not, I guess not necessarily not kind, but you know, I thought of a mullet immediately. A and mullet would be fun. Not the most fan favorite hairstyle. Oh, I think they're coming back. Oh, they are. Hockey <laughs> players, baseball players. I'd have one if I could. <laughs> okay, so that was step two. Don't worry, you guys. The next steps are quick. Step three, we're going to do the face. So pretty much, I'm just going to. Um, paint in the face any place that's not masked now if you want to get like messy and just like go across you can but for me I'm gonna try and just like stay within the white areas just in case there was an area that didn't totally mask off when I did my pen you know what I'm saying like better safe than sorry mm. but this is also your guys's painting so you guys can do whatever you want man what if she had red lips oh that would be cool that'd be such a different pop 
Or yellow. Ooh, yellow would look really good with the purple. Yeah. And do you know why? They're complementary colors. Yes! You got it, Keenan. Thank you. And then to like give an extra hint of like depth, I'm gonna make it a little bit darker like here. Mm. Like where her actual eyes would be. It did that. Right? Just oh. to give an extra hint. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Like it would be heavily shadowed underneath her ear and right under her jawline because they're two different planes. And her hair itself would be casting a shadow like over here. So like allow that to be a little bit of a darker value because it will just give the softest hint of dimension without actually having to like define it. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Again, the simple things are doing the work for you. Yes, exactly. And if you want to do that more within like the hair a little bit, where if you want to do some like lines in here for the hair, you can. Oh. Um, I'm going to just kind of, for simplicity, I'm just going to keep it blended out. Because my tendency is just like, well, I know that this would make it feel more realistic, so I'm just going to do that. But sometimes the joy of having something simple is that it's simple. And by us trying to like just make it better, make it better, make it better, we actually turn it into something that we didn't even want in the first place. And that can be really frustrating. So knowing that, if you guys, you guys can do whatever you want, but also like if it's not turning out how you want, maybe just keep it simple then. Yes. I would like to point out that that is also a skill that is something that you kind of have to work on. What? Where, because I was just thinking that you mentioned that when we want to make something and we go try and go a little more and a little more and then it turns into something that we didn't originally intend. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that can be positive, but most time for me, it's like, ugh, why did I even like try? Yeah. You know? Yeah. So trying to know where the simple part is, is I think a skill that takes practice. It does. And it really takes time. And I feel like, and we, now we let this dry. So it's okay that we talk. Perfect. Um, I feel like a really common question I get is how do you know when a painting is done? Mm. That's like one of the most common questions I get. And that's a totally valid question. But the reason why that answer is not easy is because as the artist, only you can decide when a painting is done. That's it. So like our go to is to keep working something because we're like it can always be better it can always be better it can always be better sometimes if we do that though we end up working overworking it and turning it into something that we didn't actually want and that's really frustrating that's why i highly recommend taking breaks looking at things from far away letting it be overnight and then coming back to it because when you come back to something with fresh eyes it's much easier to understand if it's done or if it's not done when you're in the middle and you're in a working session it's really hard to make that distinction so i always suggest walking away from it and then coming back to it and if you go actually you know what that feels pretty good that feels like it's done then it's done like you guys decided that and when you are in a working session, so like I have gotten to the point that while I am painting in the moment, I can tell when something is done or not. That only comes with the consistency of doing something over and over and over again on your own. That just, that just takes practice and time to be like, okay, this is done. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so it's your decision. It comes with practice. If you need help in the beginning, walk away from it and then come back to it and don't keep messing with it because like when you're first starting it's not like it doesn't make a sound it doesn't beep when it's done <laughs> like that would be super helpful like brownies. <laughs> yes <laughs> we're like i wish that the painting itself would just like bing it sings yeah <gasps> and you're like i did it yes. it's done yes. that doesn't happen so you just got to guess really. And then as you paint more and as you have your own style and as you create your own original artwork, you then become more confident in deciding when something is done. And that's really all it is, is being confident in yourself enough to say, yes, this is done. 
And even if somebody else is like, no, that's not done, you're the artist. And you get to go, it is done. I've decided it. That's the end. I'm the big old boss. That's when the sound comes. <laughs> yes. Oh. That's when the sound comes. <laughs> okay. So, we're waiting for this to dry. And what I mean by we're waiting for the paint to dry so then we can rub off the masking fluid without rubbing off any of the paint. I actually think some of these areas are dry enough that we can rub off the masking fluid. So let's try it. Like up here where I did the light wash, this feels dry. I'm gonna take my eraser. There's a special name for this and I can't remember it. It's not eraser? It is eraser, but there's like, it's called like um lay eraser i think it's like a it's french lay eraser yeah. that's it keenan yeah. thank you You're thank welcome. you for being here today and then i just softly rub back and forth and it gets rid of the masking fluid so and see wild. how much it lightened up that pencil line yeah to where you can barely see it now Okay. She's so excited right now. She's going to get her highlights done. <laughs> She's like, I just got my hair did. <laughs> Brows on fleek. <laughs> That's also French. On fleek. On fleek. On fleek. Is there a K in the... Fleek? You know how no, many years... These are too many questions. I've taken French in college, and I can't even say the alphabet. Oh, I can't either. But I've never taken French in college. And I've taken years of Spanish. Years. <laughs> and I cannot say the Spanish out. Language is just not my... I feel like that some people have a tendency towards languages. My husband is that way. I am not. And that's okay. That's yeah, that's fine. fine. It's not your forte. No worries. And really, like, if I spent the time and was dedicated towards learning another language and just, like, consistently practiced, I can get there. I choose not to. <laughs> <laughs> Which maybe in another season of my life, I will commit to it, you know? Yeah. we got plenty of time. I'm gonna try it with my finger on one, just to like see. So sometimes like, because the masking fluid asks, acts as a resistant, the watercolor beads up on the masking fluid and stays wet. So you see, that's why I kind of like brushed mm. it off and smeared it to dry it. The unfortunate thing that I didn't realize till right now is now there's color on my fingers. <laughs> so you can just take a paper towel then and maybe like dry that off. And then just take your finger and rub the area back and forth. The scary thing with using your finger is like my hand gets sweaty, you know? Mm-hmm, clammy. And it's like harder to control the edges because my finger has to, like, it's a certain thickness, you know? I can't narrow down my finger. So sometimes I, see how I rubbed more off here than I meant to? Mm-hmm. Let's move back to this guy. That was because of your finger? Yeah, it's because I was rubbing my finger hard to get the masking fluid oh. off and I rubbed the paper off instead next to it. But that's okay. That's a good lesson to learn. It's easier with the little eraser.
Sorry, I'm just in quiet mode. There's something actually really therapeutic about this. Now the reason why you want to wait for your watercolor to be dry before you do this is if it's wet around the areas and you're rubbing at it, that wet paint will smear into the areas that you're trying to keep white. And also like, I think this is a really fun tool and a really fun like thing to play with and explore, but also like, it's not gonna be perfect. <laughs> like I have little bits of color in here. This one I rub my paper off, but like, I don't know. I think to demand perfection from our supply sometimes is too much, you know? Yeah. And yes, it's true that some supplies work better for some things depending on what you're trying to do. I believe that 100%. And so like, I think that there are ways that you can be like very, very careful and really take your time and like use this like really intentionally and thoughtfully and stuff like that to avoid getting lines, to avoid your paper rubbing. Like that is all an option. But for me, sometimes I just wanna have fun. Sometimes I don't wanna like be so, and I say this, I'm using Jesse's catchphrase here. Sometimes you don't have to be so precious with it. Sometimes it's just about trying something, seeing what happens, and it's gonna turn out great, or it's not gonna turn out great, or you know what I mean? It's just a piece of paper. That you're learning with. Yeah. Or relaxing with. And it's great because like, you're gonna learn things as you go. Like, for when I did this project and made the original project, I actually didn't have this eraser. I only used my finger. And I didn't have that happen when I did this. So like this was a new learning for me, even though I've done this project before, I didn't run into that. I don't know if I was just being like really, really careful when I was painting it. I'm not sure that could have been it. But like this was a new discovery for me that now I know of where I think, okay, if I'm rubbing off masking fluid and my finger is actually rubbing on the painting a lot, that's gonna tear the painting up. Okay, now I know better for next time. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. don't think that just because something was successful once, there's not opportunity to continue learning from it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's true for like, I don't know. Languages. Everything, yeah, languages for sure. I made a huge mistake. You did? Not yet. Okay, we gotta do our splatters before we do our face. Oh. So I did my splatters after I took off the masking fluid around but not before I rubbed off the face. Ah. So I caught myself. Good save. Yes, okay, whew, for a second I was just like, no, and then I'm like, no, it's okay. This is what I did. So we haven't rubbed the face off yet. Now we're gonna do our splatters. So I'm gonna take blue, I'm gonna take purple, I'm gonna add water to it so it's nice and watery. I'm going to hide anything that is expensive around me, because this gets messy. And I'm going to do some, I lovingly refer to these as stab splatters. Yes. So when I get nice and wet and I kind of stab. And depending, excuse me, and depending on like the direction, you can get some that kind of stay or like movement if you move your brush. You can also do this kind of splatter where you put your finger out and you just hit your paintbrush against your finger. I love that kind of splatter. Those are the freckles. Yeah, you can do freckles this way. And this is just a fun texture element. You don't have to add this to your painting if you don't like it. Sometimes when a painting is happening though, I'm like, gosh, I just wanna mess it up, like just a little bit, you know? It's the, it's the chaos in me coming out, you know? <laughs> That's your super villain name. <laughs> chaos. Chaos. <laughs> okay. 
So wonderful, we kept the face clear. If you did rub off your face and you still wanna do the splatters, you can try and cover up your face with a paper towel before you do the splatters, or you can let the splatters go on the face. Like, this is your painting and you get to decide what you want. Maybe she's a warrior. <laughs> yes, that would be cool. I also kind of love it because like, as for being an artist, because like you are the one that's creating this world and you know, being the decider of it, like you can literally say you did anything on purpose and nobody can argue against you. It's like fabulous. I, I remember in art school, I had so, we did a lot of critiques, which is wonderful. It's a great way to learn and improve. And um, like, <laughs> they'd be like, why did you do this? And I'd be like, oh, well, I was really trying to communicate this and I, w I wanted the feel, you know what I mean? Like I like went into this entire explanation of why I did it and sometimes it was true. I was intentional, but other times like I wasn't. <laughs> and I was just trying to like convince people that I knew what I was doing and it worked. <laughs> It worked. Sometimes I didn't though. Like sometimes people would call me out. They'd be like, no, you did not. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, okay. I'm making that up. But I think that's like the beautiful thing about it is like, I am the creator of this world. Okay, this was wet. Do you see how that purple got into my face a little bit? Mm -hmm. That's fine. It happens, you guys. And you can see on the reference photo, like that happened in multiple places. You just keep on going. I didn't like, I have the opportunity to edit these, but I didn't want to edit those out because, and I, I try not to edit things out like that when we're doing these lessons, because I want you to know that it doesn't go perfect for me either. You know, and like, that's okay. Totally. And there's like tricks that you can do and things to like cover up mistakes. I feel like the, a professional, it's not that they never make mistakes, it's that they know how to cover them up. Mm. So like if you think that I'm here to teach you how to do something perfectly, I don't do things perfectly. So like, please don't expect that of me. Um, Cause I don't expect that of myself and I don't expect that of you. <sighs> Cause that just seems like not fun to try and make like perfect art, you know? It seems like a lot of uh, really specific attention to detail that isn't always attainable. And some people get there, like really like some people, and this is where like style and personal preference come in. Like some people are very much interested in the attention to detail in the photorealism, in the no mistakes. I, I, I'm not saying that's wrong. Like really, if that is what they find fulfilling, if that is what they wanna focus on and learn, like more power to you. Like that is just as valid as mine. For me, I just, that doesn't sound fun to me. So I don't like it, so I don't do it. And um, that's okay too, you mm -hmm. know? Here, here. Here, here. Now we're just rubbing off all of the hard work that we did, <laughs> putting it in. I would like to say I'm sorry, but it protected uh, it protected the face from the, the stabbing painting. It did. In case, I say sorry in case you felt any pressure from me to mask her face. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. I did feel pressure, but that's okay. <laughs> now for the areas that maybe the color smeared a little bit. Like here, I see some, you see that? Mm -hmm. You have two options. Well, you have three options. One, you can throw this painting away and do another one there's always opportunity to do something again and to take your learnings and try and do it better. Second option, you can take bleed proof white and try and cover it up with bleed proof white. Now, just to warn you, 
an opaque white paint on a white paper will have a slightly different texture and coloring than the paper itself. So use that information as you will, okay? okay. The last option is to like, say I'm not mad about it and let it be and accept it for what it is as part of this painting. That's a good option. That's what I tend to do. But I'm a little bit, um, a little more go with the flow, admittedly. The bleed proof white might be interesting to play with as far as changing where some more specific highlights could be on the face. Oh yeah, and you could take bleed proof white and actually make this like galaxy by just doing some star splatters. <laughs> Tell me more. Like, Keenan, didn't you do a video with a toothbrush? I did. And doing Galaxy? I did. Yeah, Keenan showed you guys how to do that. So did Nicole. So, like, take an old toothbrush. Don't use your current one. Correct. <laughs> Dip it in some bleed proof white. Do some splatters. You're going to get a Galaxy look. All right, you guys, we're almost there. Question. Yeah. Would it be helpful for those shavings from your eraser, the low eraser, mm -hmm. if you had another type of like a wider brush, maybe even like a wall painting brush to just brush that face off a little bit? Yes, that would work, but you would just want to make sure that your entire painting is totally dry. Because, like, I have these splatters that are still wet, so if I use my brush to wipe off, any wet areas will then smear. Got it. So I'm just kind of blowing them. Um, but, yeah. I wonder if actually a hair dryer would be nice. Not a heat gun, because heat gun doesn't do, like, actual movement. It just provides heat, so I wouldn't want that. But, um, like, maybe a hair dryer where it is distractional, or like a leaf blower. I was going to say an air compressor. Yes, that would work. But then your knife stabbing paintings would be streaks. That is true. That actually might be pretty cool, that though. That might be. <laughs> Okay, now I'm going around. So like when you're using this eraser, if try and avoid any of the painted areas as you're taking this off, that will just make it a little bit easier to keep the area clean. But like, of course there is some way, like sometimes you can't avoid that, but if you can, it does make it just a little bit easier to keep a clean line. And I'm like, I don't know if this is right, but like as I'm erasing, like I'm getting like kind of balls covered up mm -hmm. with color here. So I'm kind of just like peeling those off as I go. I truly don't know if that's right. It feels right. It seems right to me because they're in the way. Yeah. And this is such a huge ear area to like remove. So it's like bittersweet, like it kept things safe, but it takes a lot of time to like remove it. So you guys like pick your poison on what you want to do, you know? I think what I would do, and this is just Keenan talking. Uh -huh. Hi there. <laughs> I would do the border around the face. And then when I do the splatters, I would take a paper towel or a piece of paper and cover half the face at a time. Yeah. And do the splatters there. Yeah. But then you might be able to see, I don't know. No, I think that's I good. I also like the masking stuff because it's so cool. Yeah, there is something actually really um, satisfying about removing masking fluid. <laughs> and at this point, you might be feeling a little frustrated because one, it's taking a long time. <laughs> Two, you could have some areas that 
are a little bit smeared and because you still have like the peels and like the little things spread out all around like it's not done you're feeling like oh this isn't working and I'm super frustrated and like I don't like this keep going now is not the time to give up and I'm saying that because that's how even I'm feeling right now even though I've done this project before and even though I'm teaching you I'm thinking like oh my gosh I did something wrong I messed this up I'm not good at this that's like literally my self-talk in my head right now so I just want to acknowledge that like that's a normal feeling to feel this way because it's, it's in the in-between stage. And you just gotta push through. And you gotta give your painting a chance to like be done. And I don't know, give it a chance before you decide with such finality that you're bad at this, you know? Totally. Sometimes I get to that point when it comes to just making food. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't, I don't wanna move to go make myself breakfast. Mm -hmm. And even when I'm making breakfast because I'm powering through, I'm like, I don't want to do this. Yeah. And it's the same concept where you hit that wall and you need sustenance. <laughs> You're like, but I got to eat. Got to eat. And you can only eat so much Wendy's in a day. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> but sometimes you have to be more responsible with your finances, Sarah. <laughs> I've been talking to you about this for years. <laughs> you and your Wendy's habit. <laughs> Okay, so I'm trying to kind of like wipe off. I still have some stuff around the eyes. So I'm just trying to be really careful and gentle around there because I want to try and keep that sharp. Oh, hello, Oscar. The day Oscar doesn't turn on is going to be a bad day. Yeah, yes it is. Okay, now I'm rubbing off around the eyes. It's kind of scary. I'm trying to be really careful. Oh, look at those eyes. Beautiful. It's the eyes for me. <laughs> So like there are some kind of smeared areas. Can they see that on the close up? Right here is a little bit smeared. Yep. Kind of on the hairline. That makes sense since that's where there was a lot of paint on there. You know, it'd probably be easier to smear than up here when it's a lighter wash, just because the amount of paint. Um, even like some of the glue kind of got rolled up and caught. So I'm trying to like erase away what I can. But like overall, step back a foot. This is pretty darn cool. Okay, and one other thing that you can do, and this is our very last step. So I, I got rid of all the masking fluid. I'm feeling around for any like glue spots. Okay, now this is the very last step. And this is where we're going to sharpen up our painting. So like, for example, I got a little bit smeared right here on that cheek and you can see my masking fluid pen went rogue. So I have the chin sticks out a little mm -hmm. bit. Just grab some paint, clean it up because we removed the masking fluid. So it's not resistant anymore. So I can like adjust face shape if I need to. And also, I feel like this cheekbone got like really aggressive. Like yeah. see how pointy that is? Yeah. A little bit more than the reference photo? Well, that's no big deal. Because one, I can cover the place where it's smeared a bit and I can soften that edge. Oh, wow. So like you can reshape the face a little bit after you're done. See how that softened? Totally. And maybe I'll do that a little bit on the brow too, where like this feels like I want to round this out a little bit more. Mm. So I'm going to. Wow. But have restraint. Show some restraint. It's hard. So that feels good. And then the eye, I'm actually going to use my round too. And like, I'm going to make this dot a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to paint around it. And then this, I'm just gonna define this line because it got lost. 
and make this a little bit smaller. Wow. So like this is where like if you need to reshape the brows, thicken them up, um, you know, adjust any of the painted part, you can right now. And you can use your round two and kind of use the smallness of the points to like And I want to be clear that the white part is a glare and not like the iris part. So that's why I'm kind of making it smaller. There we go. Yeah, look at that. Okay, that's it. That is our painting. That's amazing. Isn't it so fun? Yes. Now the reveal of this won't be as exciting since I didn't paint all the way to the edges, but it's always really satisfying to remove tape. Oh no, I went too fast and I tore it. Do you see? No. Right here. It's not a huge deal. Oh, barely. Take that as a lesson, you guys. I got too excited. I was trying to hurry it up. I wasn't being respectful of my taper paper and I ripped it. That's okay. Makes it even more unique. There we go. I went nice and slow and it kept safe. Okay. I can't wait to see how you guys do with this project. You can absolutely have fun with this. Make it your own. Explore. Play with this pen. Try the different things. Be brave. You're the artist. You get to decide. If you want to join our watercolor group, we have one on Facebook. That's for the sole purpose of you guys sharing your work and learning from each other. That's called Let's Make Art Watercolor. If you're on Instagram, you can tag us at Let's Go Make Art or hashtag Let's Make Art. And if you need any of this, you can find it at letsmakeart.com. Kanan, always a pleasure. Thank you. We'll see you guys later.